Uh, many people believe that salary survey works wonders. It works miracles. So if they're having issues around pay disparity, all they need to do is to do a salary survey and they would wave that magic wand and all of their sp- salary disparity issues get taken away. But that's not the real issue. On today's episode of HR Insight, I'm going to be looking at how to interpret salary survey data the starting point is what is a salary survey a salary survey or salary benchmarking help to gather information uh, in this situation we're talking about salary data information about companies within a specific market that specific market is usually what we term your market peer group the market peer group for any particular organization uh, typically composes three different sets of category of organizations number one uh, organizations that you typically recruit staff from two organization you typically lose staff to and the third category is organizations that are in a similar industry doing something similar to yours or organizations of similar size in another related industry this will form your market peer group now the reason why there is a need for a market peer group is that an organization cannot compare itself to the entire market so typically, your, your, your one organization, you're operating within a market that has 20 companies in that industry. If you compare yourself to the entire 20, then you're not being strategic. That's why there's always a need for a specific market peer group. That peer group must be selected by that organization. The essence of the selection is to be sure that you're comparing apples to apples. The aim of salary survey is to check an organization's market competitiveness relative to similar organization, which is the peer group that have been defined. This is where the concept of external competitiveness comes into play. After gathering the salary data from the market peer group, uh, there are a lot of processes that w- that this involves. One is doing what we call a job matching. Our job matching is deciding uh, what are the benchmark jobs that we're going to compare across the organizations that we have defined as our market peer group. Because those are the uh, jobs that would serve as a common element or what we call the survey levels that we want to check for. Then you will go ahead to gather the data. Gathering the data means you're defining what kind of data do you need. Do you need only fixed pay from that organization? Or you need how they undo variable pay or what we call your short-term incentive, your long-term incentive. How do they undo retirement benefit and all those individuals conversations around benefit in kind now after all of that has been collected you now need to interpret interpreting means you're deciding what we call our external competitiveness what's going to be our compensation philosophy or what we call your pay policy so now after getting all this data from our similar market what are we going to do with this data now let's get into interpreting salary survey data now, for you to be able to interpret the salary survey data, uh, the salary survey data is critical in helping organizations to define their market positioning or what we often call their pay positioning or the pay policy line. Now, the pay policy is usually relative to the market salary data and there are three major positions that an organization, market positioning that an organization can take. One is leading the market to being at par with the market and lagging the market now for the sake of analysis salary survey data are usually broken into percentile percentile is a statistical concept that means dividing into 100 equal parts now for 100 equal parts it means the zero percentile is the lowest on the market 50th percentile is the median of the market while 100 percentile is the largest or the highest in the market now percentile in this scenario means leading the market is an organization pitching their salary above the 50th percentile of the market typically let's speak a front desk executive that is currently earning 50,000. now 50,000 is the market 50th percentile which is defined 
if an organization pitches a salary at that point, it is at par with the market. If an organization chooses to pay more than 50000 let's say 75000 that organization is leading the market for that particular pay level for that salary. And another organization that chooses to pay below 50000 say 35000 is actually lagging the market. So those are the three market positioning, leading the market, at par with the market, and lagging the market. Usually, when an organization cons- uh, compares their own salary to the market 50th percentile, they will be able to know where they currently play in the market. Then they can be able to adjust their salary to determine any of these three positioning to take. We're going to get into Excel and I'll do a quick illustration. So let me quickly do a quick illustration. Uh, this particular example that I'm using to illustrate uh, how to interpret uh, salary survey data is actually a case study that we usually uh, use in the compensation and benefit masterclass that I usually facilitate for Cresita Academy. And I'll be using that illustration for today just to drive home the point around uh, the pay positioning in terms of above the mark, uh, leading the market at PAL and lagging the market so this particular question uh you're giving the guaranteed annual pay uh for the following organization uh the salary data is presented so you have company a b c and d the data has been collected this particular data is for fixed pay now the pay percentile uh, in terms of what your normal uh, salary analysis will have been done is that each of the salary data from each of the organization would have been created as a percentile and that is from your zero percentile to your hundred percentile and for illustration purposes you have your zero being the lowest in the market 25th 50th percentile which is the market median 75th and the hundred percentile now that is the data uh, that has been presented in terms of the survey data itself. Now, if you uh, now want to start to create uh, positioning of each of the organizations, so for illustration purposes, uh, I've done a plot of company A in comparison to the 50th percentile of the market. And this is what the plot looks like. Now, you would see uh, from this particular plot of company A against the market 50th percentile and the market average, and you will see ideally that company a is the blue and you would already see that at each of the survey points uh company a is actually leading in each of this point that's why you see it's above the 50th percentile which is the orange bit of it then if i pick another organization uh company d in this survey result in themselves you would see from the illustration that in the case of company a they are leading uh, the market uh, in terms of the they are leading the 50th percentile in this scenario now in case of company d they are actually lagging the market because when you check them in comparison to the market 50th percentile they are lagging the market now this is a typical example of a salary survey data trying to interpret how you would actually take a decision Based on the outcome of the salary data analysis, which I just showed in Excel now, the organization will now be able to take a market positioning if they find out that if they compare themselves to the 50th percentile of the market, they are currently leading the market, they can decide to say, we want to continue to lead the market. If they do that comparison, like complain D in that example, and they are lagging the market, they can make a decision that want to move ourselves to the market average, which means they want to be a pal with the market or they want to lead the market. Now, each of the pay policy decisions that are decided would have an influence on the wage bill in itself because the market movement will result to a salary action across the entire pay structure. So there you have it, uh, giving you a snapshot of how to interpret salary survey data. Per adventure, you have any question for me, uh, kindly use uh, the comment section below to ask your question. I'll see you in the next episode. Remember to slash. I'll see you in the next. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next episode.